I'm Greg Hurt of CCA North Carolina, and as you know, our organization, many other coastal resource organizations, and tens of thousands of recreational fishermen are strongly advocating game fish status for redfish, spotted sea trout, and striped bass. For too long, our state has lagged behind others and not benefited from what game fish status is truly capable of doing for the citizens and businesses of North Carolina. The benefits are numerous. We've shared many of those benefits with you and will continue to do so. The benefits we claim are not unproven or undocumented. And why do I say this? Because other coastal states that have gone the game fish route have proven these benefits time after time, year after year. We'd like for you to hear from some of the folks that live and work in game fish states. They will share with you based on firsthand experience and history just what it's meant to their citizens and their businesses. We'll start with Ronnie Lester of Texas, and we asked Ronnie Lester to share with you his thoughts. Well, the game fish status went into effect September 1st of 1981. That's almost 30 years to the day. Uh, the economic impact has been tremendous. Uh, the fishery itself has survived and thrived. Uh, in 1981, in Port O'Connor, Texas, there were two full-time saltwater guides, two weekend guides. Uh, on any given weekend in that general area, there were more than 50 professional guides taking people out to enjoy and have the experience of saltwater fishing. Uh, in the state of Texas in 1981, there were not a total of 50 licensed saltwater guides. The last five-year average of licensed saltwater guides in Texas has been 1,025. That's more than a 20-fold increase. In addition to that, in 1981, there were less than 500,000 licenses for saltwater fishing sold. In 2010, there were 970,000. That's almost a doubling of the number of saltwater participants on the coast. Uh, the coastal towns now basically economically thrive because of all of the saltwater fishermen that come in, not just on weekends because the guides are working five days a week in between weekends. So you have thousands and thousands upon uh, the general public that before did not have the availability to go fishing because they didn't have a boat. Uh, but now you have a guide that they can go with, uh, and he's been fishing probably the day before, so he knows where the fish are. They're much more likely to catch fish and have an experience that they will remember, and it creates opportunity for them to participate in the future in the fishery. Next, you're going to hear from Mike Abel from South Carolina, another game fish state. Mike has a unique perspective on the game fish issue in that he's a fishing guide and operates a retail fishing equipment business. We asked Mike how important game fish status has been to South Carolina as well as him personally. The question's coming up uh, regarding uh, redfish and um, a species that we call redfish, red drum, comes under a lot of different names, uh, but it's an extremely valuable species to us in our state. Uh, we gave it game fish status in the mid-80s, um, and again, as I say, it's been an extremely valuable um, asset to us. Any weekend that you look in the Sunday paper and view it, if there are 10 pictures in there regarding any kind of species of fish, you will probably find seven of those to be redfish. Uh, regarding my business, um, given the fact that we're under the current regulations, we're on a different number of different areas, inshore and offshore, redfish has been a staple item for us. It's, kept my business going. Um, I would certainly urge any state that's looking at um, installing or creating a um, game fish status for redfish, this certainly would be a valuable asset to them. Bob Bush of Louisiana will be sharing his thoughts next. Please listen closely as Bob tells you about the impact that game fish status has had in Louisiana. He will share a message that we're confident could be a message we're able to tout in North Carolina soon. That message is that game fish status creates jobs and creates economic opportunity for coastal communities 
and the businesses that North Carolinians patronize as they make their way to the coast. In the mid-90s, Louisiana faced a turning point in conservation. Black and red fish was the hot dish, literally and figuratively. It became a popular restaurant fish not only in Louisiana, but all over the United States. And the fish that were being used came from Louisiana. A group of conservationists felt that something had to be done. We worked hard with our legislators to craft legislation that made game fish uh, status for redfish. I'm happy to report it was a big success. Restaurants continue to do well. The number of fishermen uh, grew. We had a number of commercial fishermen become guides. Others went into service business, selling bait, uh, providing services to recreational fishermen. Another side boom was construction. Camps and dwellings uh, grew all over the coast. The service industry related to that group. Air conditioning, plumbing, boat repair, restaurants, lodging, all had a positive impact on the economy of our state. It proved the theory that one, st one fish is more valuable caught on a rod and reel than hundreds of fish caught in gill nets. Plus they can be returned and caught again. Now people come from all over the world to fish in Louisiana. Louisiana is a fishing destination. It is promoted by the state as a tourist draw. Not only does the coast benefit, but the arteries leading to the coast benefit. That's a very compelling message from Louisiana. We went back to Ronnie Lester of Texas and asked him a very simple and straightforward question. Ronnie, in regards to game fish in Texas, would you do it again? Of course. I've seen, I've seen what it's impacted and how it's positively impacted uh, the participation in the fishery primarily, which uh, has had, as I expressed before, has had tremendous economic impact to the uh, coastal towns uh, that really don't have any other type of economy other than the people coming down to fish. We're going to finish up with a few more thoughts from Louisiana's Bob Bush. Finally, I would like to appeal to the legislators of North Carolina. You have the opportunity to change recreational fishing in your state forever. Not just this generation, but generations to come. What a legacy to leave. What a positive thing to do for the citizens of your state. Not just those who fish, but for every citizen. I can't sum it up any better than Bob just did. Game fish status for redfish, spotted sea trout, and striped bass is the right thing to do for North Carolina. There's good reason that legislators from many coastal states have decided it was the proper thing to do for their states. You've just heard from individuals that really understand the issue. We've also heard from leading and nationally recognized marine resource economists like Brad Gettner. The following is what Mr. Gettner had to say in an economic impact study that he completed earlier this year. North Carolina has the real potential to become an economic powerhouse for inshore fishing. North Carolina already has a strong tourism industry and given these three species game fish status has the potential to increase recreational fishing effort. Increasing recreational fishing effort will create more jobs at no expense to the state of North Carolina. CCA of North Carolina believes the facts, as well as the experience of other coastal states, make this decision a clear one. We are asking that instead of maintaining the status quo, you chart a new course for fisheries management in our great state. As Bob Bush shared, what a wonderful legacy that would be. Thanks for your consideration and thanks for your service to our wonderful state.